All right. Uh, in this lesson, mass communication, we're going to discuss uh, the properties of and the measurements of mass and volume. So our objectives here are to use the terms appropriately. We're also going to use appropriate units for our measurements. Um, figure out the mass of an object. Measure the volume by calculation for regular objects like a cube or a cylinder or a rectangular prism. Or we're going to measure the volume by displacement of an irregular shaped object, something that you wouldn't easily be able to calculate. So moving forward, uh, first off, uh, volume, and I believe we talked about this before, is uh, the amount of space an object occupies. Yeah, you get a today. Yep. So write down, this is uh, something you guys should write down. The whole thing, right? Yep. Here, now I'll give you guys a couple seconds to uh, record it, and then we'll pick it up in just a second. And go. So volume is uh, defined as the amount of space an object occupies. So uh, for regular shaped objects, like a sphere, cylinder, or cube, you guys uh, talked about this in geometry. Everyone, who's taking geometry? Has everyone taken geometry here? No. Oh, it's taken in the past. In oh, I'm in it now. Okay, so you guys will talk more about volume by calculation. Shh. Don't interrupt me, Rafi. And Oscar, you too. I know, don't. That's, that's more demeaning than actually me addressing him. So uh, it can be measured also uh, by water displacement, which we're going to talk about uh, momentarily for an ir irregular shaped object. Uh, moving forward, volume by calculation. These are a couple examples. You don't have to write this down. But if you had a sphere, the formula for that is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So, so that's the formula of a, to find the volume of a sphere a three-dimensional object to find out how much space it takes up. There's also, for a rectangular prism, you multiply the length times the width times the height. And we're actually going to be using uh, this uh, formula today in class. Uh, not Nothing very complicated, but we're going to measure the volume of a couple objects. Uh, moving forward, volume by displacement. We all know the story of Archimedes and how he went running through the streets screaming Eureka, right? No, I never heard that story. You don't know? No, can you tell us? Well, why don't we watch the YouTube video? Ooh. Oh, 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 kill him, kill him. <laughs> so let's watch this. Yeah. Oh, it's going too fast? What do you think this is? So, <laughs> so let's, here, I'll start it over. So, shh, shh, shh. Here we go. Archimedes and the story of the golden crown. So, effectively, the story goes, the story of Archimedes was, the king uh, uh, per went to a goldsmith to purchase a gold crown. And he was skeptical of it because of the color of the crown. But the, uh, the goldsmith, uh, said it was pure gold and uh so that's the king right here and the archimedes is over here and he wanted archimedes to figure out if the crown was actually gold so this is the story so he wanted so he figured out that the crown weighs as much as the king's gold but are they the same volume do they take up the same amount of space because if they have the same mass and they take up the same amount of space they're the same substance so this is Archimedes here, and he found that this, he figured out that the silver would be lighter if it, if it occupies the same volume, because silver has less mass than gold if it's the same amount. It's just less massive, comparatively. Yes, Rob? And copper. And copper as well, too. Good, good, good. Moving on. Here we go. So, I'll read the captions to you. If there's silver in the crown, the gold would need more volume for it to weigh the same as the gold. So, what he's trying to think of is a way to measure the, how much space it takes up. And he wanted to think about it in the bathtub. 
So, it's coming up. So, Archimedes figured it out. He got in the bathtub, and the water overflowed. And it spilled out. I don't know. This is, the, this is the fable. I don't know how true it is. It was a long time ago. So Archimedes, what he did was, he noticed that when he went into the bathtub, the water level rose and overflowed. So that's how he figured out what displacement was. He figured out that his volume, however much him, he went in, is how much water leaked out the tub. And that's how he figured out how to find the volume of the uh, thing, of, of the crown. And he found out that the, uh, the goldsmith cheated him out of money. And back then, when you cheat the king out of money, they cut your head off. And you know you can't live without a head. So they executed the guy. And uh, so that's the story of Archimedes and the Eureka. So pretty good, uh, pretty good little cartoon there that I found. Moving on. I have a question. Yep. How did that guy make it um, sober then? He did the, that he, way? Was he was the one. Thing? Yeah, he was the one who made. Um, he was the one who made the crown. So he took all the money as if it were gold, but he melted in some silver, kind of like we uh, did with the penny activity. Yeah. Made an alloy. All right. Actually, F10. Continue recording. Oh no! Is this happening again? Uh, moving forward. Uh, this is how we read a graduated cylinder. Now, I want you guys to copy down the first bullet here. Uh, the meniscus is the curve that forms um, when it's in a container. Yeah, so you, you guys have probably heard this term before. Um, please, Oscar, don't interrupt. Everybody else would Okay, because I'd warned you before. Now, uh, meniscus is when, uh, is you guys can take a look over at the corner here, at the edge, the, the liquid curves down and over and back up again. So how we, um, so that's because the water actually sticks to the side of the container right there. And what we do is there's a, uh, a certain way to measure this, and the uh, graduated cylinders are made in a certain way so that they can uh, properly measure the, the correct volume of the substance in them. Okay. So let's uh, move on momentarily. Moving forward. This is how we read a graduated cylinder. This is important. Write this bullet down. We read a volume at the bottom of the meniscus. So right where that meniscus hits its lowest point, that's where we measure the volume. If you guys want to sketch this, that's fine. You don't have to sketch the numbers. Just sketch the meniscus. Yeah, and the... Do... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Just write down. We, we read the sound. Yep. You read the me you measure the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. So for measuring this, we measure at 20 milliliters because this is the 20 mark right there. Technically, since it's at exactly 20, you should write 20.0. So that's how to indicate that it's precise to the tenths. That's a uh, something called precision in your measurements, which we'll talk a little bit about as we go on. And I will pause it. So uh, we read this as 20 milliliters because at the bottom of the meniscus hits that 20 line right there where that blue line is. So volume by displacement, and you guys definitely want to calculate this. So how we calculate volume by displacement, we can do this for a regular or an irregular shaped object. Both will work. Uh, but if you know the initial volume, like Archimedes' initial bathtub water, and you place something in, we take an object and put it inside the graduated cylinder, the level will rise. Kind of like if you guys have ever had, um, you know, a pail of water at the beach and you start putting your hands in there, the water goes up. 
That's called displacement. Your hand is displacing the water. So when we do it with a graduated cylinder, as you see this here starts at about 0.48, reading from the bottom of the meniscus, we add our object and it goes up to uh, 1.7. So we can calculate the volume of the object. It's the final volume subtracted from the initial volume. Okay? So that's what volume by displacement is. So that's how we calculate the volume by displacement. Oscar, can you please make sure that you keep in your area? If you need more space, you can move to one of the other desks, okay? All right. So uh, that's how to calculate by displacement. The key thing is the final volume after you added the object minus the initial volume before you added the object. Almost done. Uh, so right now, guys, I want you guys to calculate the volume of this fish. This here, this here is the initial volume of the water. Okay? This here is the final volume after the fish is added. So I want you guys right now to figure out using, you can use the formula or just figure it out how much the fish volume occupies. 